Lesson 2 4, Part 2 Synthetic Division and Rational Root Theorem. Okay, guys, we worked Friday, long division. Going back and reviewing that. Now we are reviewing synthetic division. And synthetic division, even if you don't remember, I can guarantee you prefer synthetic division over long division when you're allowed to use synthetic division. Okay, which the key with synthetic division is you have to be dividing by a linear factor. So like x plus or minus a number for synthetic division to work. So we're being asked to take to use synthetic division to divide this function by x minus 3. And then they ask us to write a summary statement in fraction form. So anyone remember anything about synthetic division? Just put numbers. OK, synthetic division, we get to eliminate the variables. OK. So when I set up synthetic division, I set up a box here. We're going to have a number in the box. We're going to have a row of numbers to the right of the box. I'm leaving room for row numbers, and I'm drawing my line. OK. I, I promise it's there in your brain somewhere. X minus 3 is what I'm dividing by. What represents x minus 3 in my box? Positive 3? Okay. Kind of like um, on Friday, if you were trying to find the remainder when you were dividing by x minus 3, what did we actually plug into the function? Positive 3. Okay. So it's always, when they give it in that form, x minus 3, you always use the opposite sign. Now, if they just say when k equals 3, don't change the sign. Now, to the right of this, we're going to write out our coefficients in order, highest power to lowest power, yes? So my first coefficient is 2. That's on the x to the third term. Next, I need the x to the second term, which is negative 3. After x to the second, I need the x to the first term, negative 5. And then I need my constant term, which is negative 12. First thing we do, we're going to drop the 2. That 2 automatically always carries down to our answer. So I'm dropping the 2 right there. And then this is a series of multiplying and adding. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. So when we multiply, we're always multiplying by number in the box. So 3 times whatever your last number is down here below the line. And then it bounces up and goes in my next empty spot. 3 times 2 is 6. Multiply, add. Negative 3 plus 6. 3. Now... We add it, so now we multiply again. What am I multiplying this time? 3 times 3, which is 9. Where's that 9 go? Under my negative 5. Then what do I do with negative 5 and 9? Add. Negative 5 plus 9 is 4. Now what do I do with that 4? Multiply by 3. 3 times 4 is... 12. What do I do with that 12? Add. Negative 12 plus 12? Zero. zero. What does that zero represent? My remainder. So in this particular case, I have a remainder of zero. Okay, so what 2, 3, 4, 0 is my answer. But that's not the answer you give me. We have to put that back in terms of x here. What does this 2 represent? 
2x squared, right? Because it's always, because I ha start off with x to the third, we are dividing by an x to the first. My highest power in my answer is now x to the second. So always one less than that. Um, and actually, as I write this out, it said fraction form. Well, it was 2x to the third minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 12, right? And we are dividing by x minus 3. Can't remember. I don't know that you have to express your answers like that, but I want you to be aware of that's what we just did, right? We just did that division problem. And it equaled, so 2 is now 2x squared, which means what's 3? Plus 3x, and the 4 is plus 4. Remainder of 0 means I don't have to do anything. If I needed to do something with this remainder, like with long division, we would make it a fraction. So it would be like plus 0 over your original divisor, x minus 3. So in this case, it divides out to be 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. Those of you who have seen that before, it seems familiar. If you haven't seen it before, is it okay? I don't know if there's anyone that hadn't seen it before. Jordan, do you remember doing this last year? You did? Okay. Okay. Well, I know if you had me, I know we went through it. It's the people that didn't have me that I'm like, I have no idea if you guys saw it or not, but I know you said you did. Sounds familiar, good. Okay, that's all I care about. Okay, guys. Again, I know in my class, I'm pretty sure I skimped on this last year, but rational roots theorem. Okay? So, rational roots theorem, theorem says, suppose f is a polynomial function of degree 1 or bigger. Then if x equals p over q, then p is an integer factor of the constant coefficient, coefficient, and q is an integer factor of the leading coefficient. Okay. p over q. Notice it says p is factors, p is a factor of the integer of the constant, q is a factor of the leading coefficient. What this is going to do is this is going to help me find my roots. Because that P over Q gives me what I call PRRs, or the potential rational roots. So let's look at example two, and how we're going to use this rational roots theorem. It says, find the rational zeros of this function. So we're not caring about the, any imaginary. We're not caring about irrational. We're just caring about rational, so those that can be expressed as a fraction. We're going to use our rational roots theorem to find what I call PRRs. And PRR stands for Potential Rational Roots. If you notice up there, it said that potential the rational roots can be found using x equals p over q. Okay, let's go back. What did it say about p? p is an integer factor of the constant coefficient. What is the constant in this problem? 4. So that means... On top here, when I'm trying to find my potential rational roots, I'm going to be looking at factors of 4. Any integer factors of 4. That's what's going to go on top. It's always factors of that constant number that should be at the end. What's Q represent? Q is an integer factor of the leading coefficient. What do I mean leading coefficient? Okay, whatever is out front of my highest degree term, which in this case, what is it? The invisible one, right? That is my leading coefficient. So for my denominator, I need factors of one. 
And once we get into this, I'll write out less probably, but. Okay, guys, factors of four. What are possible factors of four? Two. Two? One? Four? Okay. Now, when we give these possible factors, we don't just say positive one, positive two, and positive four. Technically, can they divide by negatives? It says integer coefficients. So on top, my fact, possible factors are four, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. And I'm just listing them off right now. We'll clean this up in a moment. Denominator, what are factors of one? Integer factors are just plus or minus one, because numbers that multiply to be one are just one times one. So if I clean this up, what is my list of possible rational roots? Well, 1 over 1 is 1. 2 over 1 is 2. 4 over 1 is 4. So my potential rational roots, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Now, we're not done here, but I'm boxing that because... There may be problems in homework that just ask you to list potential rational roots that you may not need to go any farther. Okay, with that in mind, in this case that we want to know any rational roots, any rational zeros. So we have to figure out what works. Right here we have, if you go, if you look at this, there are six possible rational roots. At most, how many of these can work? At most, how many zeros are in this problem? Three. Now, are we going to necessarily have all three? No, they might be irrational. They might, some might be imaginary, but there's at most up to three. Ideas and how I can figure out which ones work. What do you mean, plug them in? Okay, so he says substitute the value for x. And what, what are we looking for when we substitute the value for x? Yeah. Remember on Friday we talked about the remainder theorem? If you plug a value for x in and you get and you get it to equal 0, it shows a remainder of 0. So thus then it would be a factor. Okay? Now, What's another way to show if there's a remainder of zero? Okay. Synthetic division. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to plug the number in, but here's the deal. When it comes to finding all rational zeros, there are some times when, I don't know if I want to say domino effect, but once you find one, usually there, what you get as a result of there can help you find more. Okay, so I'm actually going to encourage us to use synthetic division. How can my calculator help narrow down which ones I should try? Because we could start going in and trying all, all six of these. How can my calculator narrow this down? Okay, graph the equation, see which ones look like they might be zeros. I mean, technically, you can find them 100% on your calculator. However, there's a reason we go through this process. Okay, I'm okay, especially if you can show me your work, of using the calculator to support yourself here. And you'll see, as we get into more difficult problems, why this process is so important. So please do not just be like, oh, well, I'm just going to find them on the calculator and be done because there is an importance to this process. So, if I graph my original function, okay, and I really don't want to do any fancy work, honestly, okay, so I'm not even going to zoom in on my calculator or anything. My choices were plus or minus one, two, and four. Do any of those look like possibilities according to my calculator? Positive 2 looks like we should try it. Any others? What's it look like on these other two? 
Does it look like they're decimals? Okay. So what that probably means is they're, based on my rational choices, they're probably going to be irrational ones. Does this problem ask me to find the irrational ones? No. But future problems will. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a sketch of the graph. And honestly, the only thing I really care about on the graph is where it crosses. Three, four. What's it cross? Right outside of six? So it crosses there, a little outside of six, and a little over here. Okay, again, all I'm trying to show you is that based on the graph, and I'm putting this in where when people look up my notes. Based on the graph, my recommendation is that we try x equals 2. So when we say try x equals 2, talking synthetic division, Put two in your box here. What's my row of numbers that go next to my box? One, negative eight, ten, and four. Do you remember how we did this? Drop the one, then we what? Multiply. Two times one is? Two. That goes under the negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2, negative 6. Again, we multiply. 2 times negative 6, negative 12. And now we are adding 10 plus negative 12, negative 2. 2 times negative 2, negative 4. 4 plus negative 4, 0. What's that 0 tell me? There's no remainder, and so that tells me that 2 is a factor, yes? Okay. Now, based on looking at the graph, we were pretty sure there was no other rational roots, right? They didn't match up with 1 plus or minus 1, negative 2, or plus or minus 4. However, again, trying to get you guys ready for the process, what we're going to look at here is we want to look at these remaining pieces, because if there are any other rational roots, we can find them in these remaining pieces. So, what I'm doing here is I'm going to rewrite my, rewrite my function. First of all, what factor does this 2 represent? In terms of parentheses, x minus 2. And we know that's a factor that works, yes? What about 1 minus 6 minus 2? What factor does that represent? x squared minus 6x minus 2? Okay. If there are any other rational zeros, it would factor. Can you give me a product of negative 2 and a sum of negative 6? Not happening, is it? Okay, so there is, besides the graph that we already looked at, there's additional proof that what is our only rational 0? x equals 2. And the note I'm going to write here is that this one does not factor... So that one would be irrational roots. If they had asked me to find all roots, we'd be proceeding forward with like quadratic formula or something that would give me answers there. But we're going to be thankful on this one that we don't have to. Yes? You can graph it to start. Okay. Now, sometimes... 
the ones that we looked at and we said, okay, those are decimals, they're going to be irrational in this case. If we had had a potential rational root of, say, one half, we would still need to take that into account. So to me, there's still value in finding and listing your PRRs. In this case, would it have mattered? No. Okay, but there is still value. And just like there is still value of looking at these remaining pieces, again, in this problem, did it really matter? No, but certain problems it will. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to convince you guys. Don't just, okay, man, she did a lot of extra steps there. I'm not going to do all those extra steps. There are times they're necessary, even though this time they weren't. Does that make sense? So I get it. There are times you can take some shortcuts. There are times you can't. So give me a chance. Okay, let's look at example five here. What are the directions on this one? Find the rational zero. So same directions as last time, right? Of 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x minus 2. So what am I asking you to start with? PRRs. How are we going to find PRRs here? If we look up top, it's P over Q, right? What's P represent? Factors of what? The constant, and my constant in this case is negative 2. Q represents factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 3. So we have factors of 3. And again, I would not that factors of negative 2, that phrase that I'm writing out, you don't have to do that, okay? Again, this is when you look back at my notes later, I want you to be able to see where these numbers came from. What are factors of negative 2? Yeah, the only way you can get 2 is 1 times 2, right? So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. What are factors of 3? Yeah, 1 times 3. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. To me, here's the important part before we go forward, is having a list of potential rational roots. You need to go through and pair all these up. And you can do it in any order you want. I tend to take turns putting them over the denominator. So like right here, what's one over one? One, so plus or minus one. What's two over one? Two, so plus or minus two. I've put everything over the denominator of one, now I'm going to put everything over the denominator of 3. So what's 1 over 3? Plus or minus 1 third. And what's 2 over 3? Plus or minus 2 thirds. So what is this list that I have? PRRs, potential rational roots. You just can't see the last one. Okay, now, in Algebra 2, we would have just started trying these until we found something that didn't work, or until we found something that worked. In Pre-Cal, the shortcut you can take, graph it and see which ones might work. Okay, and again, you don't have to sketch the graph by any means. I'm putting this in the notes just, again, as a resource that someone that tries to look at it later. Based on that graph, 
plus or minus one, two, one third, two thirds. Well, we have three roots. Which ones do you think we should check? What's this first one look like it could be? Negative two. What's this one to the right look like it could be? Positive one. And honestly, if you want to double check those and get more proof, you can. What about this middle one? Could it possibly be something we have in our list? Maybe negative one third? Looks more like one third than two thirds, doesn't it? Okay. Is it guaranteed to be that? No, but is it worth a try? Yes. So, what I'm going to write here is based, whoops, can't spell, based on the graph, I'm going to try x equals negative 2, 1, and maybe negative 1 third. Okay. Again, I haven't double checked myself in the calculator. Oops. But that's what I'm guessing. Now, that negative one third, we're not 100% sure about. Besides that, it's a fraction. I'd save it for the end. Because by the time we get to the end, it'll be pretty nice. We won't have to worry about that fraction as much. So let's start with either the negative two or the one. Doesn't really matter because we're pretty sure on both and we're going to have to use both. So I'm going to use the negative two unless you guys care. I tried the negative two. Okay, what's my row of numbers that goes besides the negative two? Three, four, negative five, negative two. And we haven't had this happen. Do we have this happen today? We might not have it happen today. Do you guys remember, just like long division, the same is true in synthetic division. If you have a missing place value, what do you have to throw in? A zero. Okay, I can't remember if it happens in homework. It very well could. So just an FYI, because I'm not seeing it happening in the notes. Okay, what you got here, guys? Bring down the three. Negative two times three. Negative six. Four plus negative six. Negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2. 4. Negative 5 plus 4. Negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1. 2. And negative 2 plus 2. 0. What's that 0 tell me? Remainder of 0. And so negative 2 does work. Now, what do we have to check next? We need to check... One, are you listening? Because I'm not going to go back and use my same original row of numbers. And this is important when it comes to the time that we want to find irrational or imaginary ones. Okay. I'm going to use what I would call a new row of numbers. We had a remainder of zero, yes? So this three, negative two, negative one represents a new factor. That represents a factor of 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. We're going to use that new row of numbers with our synthetic division. So the next one we're going to try is 1, but the difference is use our new row of numbers. So I'm going to now use 3, negative 2, negative 1. Because what we're doing is we're factoring as we go. Each time we use that new row of numbers, we're factoring and reducing our factors so we know what's happening. Drop down the 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 2 plus 3? 1. 1 times 1? 1. Negative 1 plus 1? 0. So what do you know? Did it work? It works. Now, at this point, you don't need synthetic division to finish this up. What does this 3 and 1 represent if we put x's back with it? 
3x plus 1. Keep in mind, this was originally an x cubed when we started over here. We divided away a power, so this right here is an x squared. Carry this over here, it's an x squared. Divide away another power. This represents 3x plus 1 as a factor. If you take 3x plus 1 and set it equal to 0, what do you get when you solve that? Negative 1 third. Because 3x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1 third. And then that proves, that's my proof that those are the three that work. So what are my all my rational zeros? Negative 2, 1, and negative 1 third. And again, some of you are saying, I could have just gotten this from the calculator. I agree. Not going to argue that fact. However, I'll say it again. There's reason for the reason for why I went this way. And the next one will show you. Okay? Because what's different on my next problem? It says, not just find rational zeros, but it says all real zeros. So if it says all real zeros, that means I don't want just rational. I want rational and irrational. Okay, we've got to move because we're running short on time. Same process. So meaning I'm going to start with my oops, PRRs. So remember it's P over Q. Factors of what over factors of what? Okay. Factors of 8 over factors of 2. Okay. Factors of 8. What you guys got? Okay. My brain for 8 says 1 times 8 or 2 times 4. Those are my ways to get to 8. So I wrote down plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. Factors of 2? 1 and 2. Okay. Come up with a good solid list here. Take turns putting everything over the denominator. So everything goes over 1. So 1, 2, 4, 8. Then I need everything to go over 2. What's 1 over 2? 1 half. So plus or minus 1 half. 2 over 2? 1. We already got that. 4 over 2? 2. I already got it. 8 over 2? 4. I already got it. Do I need to relist things? No. Waste of time. So these are my what? Potential rational roots. PRRs. Okay. Calculator. Has anyone graphed this and gotten which ones work? Or which ones look like they might work? Okay, guys, I looked at my graph. Thoughts on which ones these might represent? Okay, that might be a negative one half. Okay, what else? Okay, that might be a four. What about the other two? They don't look like they match up, do they? So that means those are probably irrationals. And note for irrational and imaginary roots always occur in pairs. It's always a plus or minus pair. Helpful little hint. So we're going to try x equals 4 and negative 1 half. 
Guess which one I'm going to start with? Let's try the 4. So 2, negative 7, negative 8, 14, 8. Drop down by 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Negative 16, negative 2, negative 8. Remainder of 0, it works. I'm going to go ahead and finish this problem real quick. Um, it'll be in the video. Okay. You've got homework to do for tomorrow, guys. 4 worked. Now I'm going to use negative 1 half. Guys, yes, you can use a fraction in synthetic division. It is not horrible. And don't forget, when you set up your second time of synthetic division, you can use that, use that new row of numbers. Down to 2, negative half times 2, negative 1, 0. Negative half times 0, 0. Negative 4 plus 0, negative 4. Negative half times negative 4 is 2. Remainder is 0. So again, it works. Now, look at... What does this represent? This start off x to the fourth, so this is x to the third. This is now x to the third, so this is x squared. 2x squared minus 4 equals 0. Add 4. 2x squared equals 4. x squared equals 2. Square root. x equals plus or minus square root of 2. Those are my irrational roots. So, total roots. My rational roots are 4 and negative 1 half. Irrational roots, positive radical 2 and negative radical 2. Notice all four are represented at this point. Okay. Homework is listed. <laughs> I did not